Hello fellow artists! Now, I'm sure to a lot of you, the idea of learning how to use perspective grids in your art might seem a bit daunting at first, but trust me, it's easier than it looks, and once you learn how to use them, you can start to make really awesome looking drawings like this. So, with that out of the way, let's start learning some perspective. Now, there are five basic types of perspective grids. One point, two point, three point, curvilinear, and isometric. Let's start by learning one point perspective. One point perspective is the simplest type of perspective, but that doesn't mean you can't use it to create some pretty cool drawings. For example, this drawing was made by using one point perspective. Now, the first thing we have to do when drawing perspective is place the horizon line. The horizon line represents where the sky and the ground meet in our image. Once we do that, then we have to place a vanishing point on the horizon line. The vanishing point is essentially a guide to help you uh, follow the perspective of your drawing. Because uh, when you're drawing in perspective, things that are further away become smaller in the image. There are a couple ways to create a vanishing point to use in your perspective drawings. The simplest way is to just draw a straight line, duplicate it, rotate it, and repeat until it looks a little something like this. But if you're using Photoshop like me, then there's a much better way of doing it. First, you select your polygon tool, change the fill to transparent, set the size to 2 pixels, check the freeform option in the settings menu, change the star ratio to 1%, check the box that says from center, and change the number of sides to 100. Now when you click and drag with this tool, it should make a much cleaner looking vanishing point. Now that we've placed our vanishing point, let's move it onto the horizon line. Now when drawing in perspective, the easiest shapes to draw are definitely cubes. So let's practice using this grid by drawing some of those. When drawing the front of your cubes, hold shift to draw perfectly straight lines. And when you draw the sides of the cubes, simply follow the lines of the grid. If you're using Photoshop, you can click on where you want your line to start, and then hold shift and click on where you want your line to end, and Photoshop will make a perfectly straight line for you. And there you have it. That's one point perspective. Now, if you wanted to draw these cubes from a different angle, then using two point perspective would probably be a better idea. Here's an example of a drawing done in two point perspective. Two point perspective is essentially the exact same as one point, but with another vanishing point. So, to make your two point perspective grid, what you're going to want to do is select your first vanishing point, then click Ctrl J to duplicate it, and move it over to the side of the canvas. And now you have a two point perspective grid. Now, when drawing on a two point perspective grid, all the vertical lines are going to be perfectly straight, but any other lines are going to be following the grid, like this. Here's what a couple of cubes look like in a two point grid. Next up is three point perspective. Now, if you wanted to draw these cubes from a very high or very low angle, then three-point perspective is probably what you would use. Here's an example of a drawing done in three-point perspective. Now, to make a three-point perspective grid, you simply need to duplicate one of your already existing vanishing points and place it somewhere above or below the horizon line. In this example, I will place it below the horizon line, making it feel like we're looking down on our objects. Once I draw some cubes using this grid, you can see it looks like we're looking at them from above. Also, now it's probably a good time to note that the closer you place your vanishing points together, the more warped your drawings will look. So make sure to move your vanishing points outside of the canvas, a less warped looking perspective. Now, let's move on to curvilinear perspective. Using a curvilinear perspective grid to draw will sort of simulate the warping effects of a fisheye lens and help you create artworks like this. To create a curvilinear perspective grid, start by creating a circle using the circle tool then duplicate it and use the transform tool to squash it a bit. Then repeat this a bunch of times until you have something that looks a little like this. Then duplicate all of these circles and rotate them 90 degrees. Once you've done that, you can draw a horizon line going straight through the middle and another line going vertically through the middle. Now we can just follow these lines to draw some cubes. And there we have it. That's how some cubes would look in a curvilinear perspective grid. Lastly, we're gonna make an isometric grid. If you've played any base building or tower defense games, you've probably seen this type of perspective being used. Unlike any other perspective, isometric grids don't have any vanishing points. This makes it so no matter how close or far something is away from the camera, it'll still be the same size. Here's an example of an illustration that's used isometric perspective. To make an isometric grid, you'll first need to use the square tool to make a square, then duplicate it and squash it into a rectangle, then duplicate that a bunch of times until it fills up the square completely. Once you've done that, you can duplicate all of those lines and hold shift to rotate them exactly 60 degrees. Do this one more time, but rotate these lines negative 60 degrees. Then scale up the whole thing, and there you have it. You've got yourself an isometric grid. Now using an isometric grid is pretty self-explanatory. Just follow the lines to draw some cubes, 
And there you go! That's how you make an isometric grid! Now that you know all the basic types of perspective, let's see if you can spot them in action with a little game I like to call, Can You Spot the Perspective Grid? Now, how this game works is I'll show you an illustration that has used a specific type of perspective grid, and I'll give you 10 seconds to guess what kind of grid it is. Okay, ready? Here's the first one. Time's up. Now, let's see if you got it right. This illustration has used a two-point perspective grid. Did you get it right? Well, don't worry if you didn't, we've still got a couple more to go. Now, can you guess what type of perspective grid was used in this illustration? Time's up! Did you guess isometric? Well, if you did, you'd be right. This illustration used an isometric grid. Next up is this lovely little illustration. What type of perspective grid do you think was used? Time's up! This time it was one point perspective. I wonder how many of you got that one. Okay, how about this one? Time's up! This illustration used a three point perspective grid. Okay, last one. Let's see if you can get it. And that's time! Hopefully this one was obvious. This illustration used a curvilinear perspective grid. Well, did you get all of them? Hmm? Yeah? You did? Okay, great. Now that we've covered all the basics of perspective, let's put everything we've learnt today to the test and make a drawing using perspective. Okay, so for this drawing, I plan to put my two OCs, Scala and Felix, sitting atop a bell tower overlooking a sunset. Pretty simple. Let's see if we can draw a quick composition sketch for it. A few minutes later. And here we go. Here's a little composition sketch I came up for this idea. So obviously you can see we've got Scala and Felix sitting atop of this bell tower from a slightly low angle. Now next step is making a perspective grid. A lot of boring math later. And there it is. I chose to use a three point perspective grid since we're looking at this drawing from quite a low angle. And three point perspective grids are very good for simulating high or low angles. If I zoom out here, you can see that I put one perspective point over to the right of the canvas, one way over here to the left, and one up above here. Now when I placed all these, I tried my best to line up the perspective lines with my sketch to replicate the perspective that I'd already sketched out. Okay, next step is to clean up the sketch. Five minutes later. And here's a much cleaner version of the sketch. You can see I've separated the background from the foreground with just uh, some simple shades of blue. I also made the characters blue a little bit darker so you can see where they are clearly in the scene. Uh, if I turn on my perspective grid, you can see that I've followed the lines exactly to draw this bell tower in perspective. And also some of the background elements around here. Okay, now that we've got the sketch done, let's do the line art. One eternity later. And here's how the line art turned out. You can see if I zoom in here, I added some line weight around the characters and around the bell tower to make them pop out a little bit. Next up, I'm just going to use the bucket tool to add some base colors. One minute later. And here it is, some simple base colors. Uh, I made all of these tiles and stones uh, different, slightly different colors just to give the textures of this piece a little more variation. And yeah, that's about it for the base colors. Uh, let's render it. Thousands of tears later. And here is the fully rendered piece. And yeah, I'm really happy with how this drawing turned out. Learning perspective definitely helped out a lot. And honestly, I don't think I could have made a drawing like this without using a perspective grid. I definitely would recommend you guys go and try this yourselves. Try to make a drawing using your own perspective grid. Trust me, it's definitely necessary if you want to draw stuff like buildings and backgrounds. It'll help out so much. And yeah, that's the end of the video. Bye!